<sighs> Started ten minutes late. Come back ten minutes early. It's fine. I also took a moment while I was enjoying lunch to check where Asuna is. It's in Bosk. I can get Asuna in Bosk. So let's go do that. Also, Barbie died right before the boss. Sorrow. We were like inches from the boss room. So. Yeah. Let's go ahead and get that Asuna that we need. Because. Yeah, we need it. John. Chocobo. <sighs> it's in Bosk! I don't think I ever checked the magic shop in Bosk. It's supposed to be in Bosk. If it's not in Bosk, I'm going to be very annoyed and buy a bunch of eye drops. Fuck you. Buddy, bub, get the fuck out of my way. Wait, no, this isn't where we want to- this isn't even where I want to be. Where's the magic shop? There's the magic shop. I hear tell you have a Suna. Give it to me. Is this what a suit is called in, F in the NES version? Have I just been looking at heal and going uh, FF2, NES, Asuna? I think this might be Asuna, I just, it's not called Asuna so I didn't realize it. Well, let's give... Oh, we don't have those sleeps anymore. Let's give it to Barbie. We'll use the inn. And we will go. And I also have a map here to reference, so, like, I, I'm not gonna waste my time again on things, so, um, room 8 has treasure, room 13 has treasure that I don't care about, so we'll just hit room 8 on our way up and then we'll hit the tre the gold armor, and then we'll go around towards the boss. That's the plan. That's right, Gordon hasn't soared up yet, so Gordon is still shit. Because the save was before we went in. Oh well. We've learned our lesson. Gosh, we wasted an hour because we didn't have a Suna. Essentially, we wasted an hour. thing is, knowing everything I'm learning, I really feel like this game can be beaten in like 10 hours if I don't suck. 
I just, I'm making bad decisions. And where in FF1, bad decisions led to having to completely restart the game, here, you can recover. You can recover from bad decisions here. It just takes time and frustration. I was supposed to get a haircut today, but I'm like, uh, I don't wanna. I don't wanna get a haircut. I don't wanna go deal with weird people that I don't know. Mm. It's fine. We'll, we'll beat Cash and Keep, and that'll be the end of the day, and maybe I'll have time to go get my haircut. Or maybe I just won't do it this weekend. It's not like I see anyone. Move back to... move back to Nebraska for legal transition, all your friends are like, oh, you should hang out, and then, hey, want to hang out? No, we're busy. No, 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 no. And then they complain, why is no one ever hang out? It's like, well, because you don't want to hang out. And part of it, a big part of it, is there's no fucking public transit and no one wants to drive. <clears throat> And let's be real, no one wants to drive. Driving fucking sucks. I don't get why people like drive like I get a sense that like in the fifties or something people were like, ooh, cars, cool. But like No? But the people who made those decisions, and the people who liked it, and learned that that's the only way to do it, are still making decisions. And they're like, density does not support transit. And it's just like, what the fuck do you mean density doesn't support transit? We have half a million people, you mean to tell me that we can't support transit? And then they go, well... You're comparing to places that have much smaller land areas. I'm like, yeah. Is there a reason that we need to be sprawling out over all of Douglas County as a city? Is there a reason we need to do that? Is there a reason that we need 154 square miles for half a million people? Because I don't think we need it. Most people I know who live in the suburbs live in the suburbs because they can't afford anything else and they don't want to live in the suburbs. Like, maybe build other things? Maybe build the sorts of places people want to live in? Like, so far in my life, I have met one person who wants to live in a suburb. It's a gal in Texas who seems to be infatuated with suburbs. Seems to think that the jobs are better in the suburbs and the money is better, and I'm just like, hun. If I move to the city and get a job in the city for the same profession I'm doing now, my pay doubles. My rent goes up by 30%, my pay goes up by 100% after taxes. Like, no, honey. Things are not better in the suburbs. Yeah, exactly. The car demands the car gets. Fucking ban cars. I don't know. I, the older and older I get, the more and more I shift from let's build infrastructure to enable us to move away from car-dependent society to ban cars. We'll figure out the infrastructure when no one can fucking drive anymore. Which is probably not a position you can sell, but oh, uh, because no one, no one wants to build the infrastructure. People are like, we need the cars. It's like, no, we don't need the cars. What the hell are you on about? We don't have density. Density follows access. Like, it. If you look at a map of Omaha. Which I'm not going to pull up because I want to beat Cashin. But if you look at a map of Omaha, you'll see that 
There's thick density all along Dodd Street and L Street and Maple Street and Center Road where Center Road is. Like there's these stri this grid of high density with this almost invisible low density suburbs in between it. And like... The way we have the city built, we have access along Dodge, L, 72nd, Center, 120th. And that, and we get density there, like effortlessly. I mean, yeah, they still have to zone permitting it, but we get that density. And in these suburbs, there's no access. It's hard to get to it. So there's no density. And my understanding is, and like all along Dodge Street, the buses come fairly regularly. So Dodge Street gets a lot of development. Because it turns out when people want to build shit, they want to build shit where people are going to be able to go and spend money. And when people can get there, it's easier for them to go spend money. Wow. But for some reason, people seem to think that you need to build it before you build the access to it. And I'm just like... Why? Are you expecting some developer to invest millions of dollars building some building under the trust that you're going to put a bus to it later or an l-line that's stupid oh a mithril helm we can see if somebody needs it um you're wearing mithril lori should not be you're wearing bronze. Let's get a mithril helm. And Gordon. You're not wearing a helmet at all. Wear a bronze helmet. You dingus. Also, let's uh do some cures. Yeah, that's my big rant from a public transit perspective. And the thing is, I've been out east, and there's towns out east with a fraction of the population of Omaha with buses that work. It's like, why? And, I, and this half a million is... I think part of it is that, actually. I think part of it is that there's people who played SimCity and think that's how city planning works, or city skylines and think that's how city planning works. And it's like, if you're going to have an industrial area, you need to be able to get goods and workers to it. If you're going to have a commercial area, you need to get consumers to it, and workers to it, and goods to it. And if you have a residential area, people need to get to work and consumables from it. And if they can walk, they're going to be really happy. If they can ride a bus, they're going to be really happy. I know a lot of people who are like, I don't ever want to, I don't want to spend an hour by a bus to get anywhere. And then every time they go on a vacation to London or to Chicago or to... New York, they always talk about how wonderful it was. I'm just like, you're talking about how you don't want to do, and then you praise it. And fucking wear rats. I hate wear rats. <laughs> oh yeah, rail, rail is how you get. And we do, we use rail for freight in the US. We still do. But we use trucks even more, which is so annoying. Like, hi. Welcome to the United States, where we have a well-developed freight rail system, but instead of maintaining and using it, we just... Uh, 
cart everything in by train or by truck and then go oh no why do we not why is global warming why are we spending so much on why are our roads always full of potholes it's like wear and tear from a passenger vehicle on a road is very low wear and tear from a truck is very high so you end up like With roads degrading like heck because we're using freight trucks all the time instead of rail. Wow, yeah. And guess which one's probably more profitable? Okay, what I'm gonna do before I use the antidotes, let's check heal. Well, the thing to remember about the U.S., which is something I hate about it, we... <laughs> I'm gonna sound real fucking arrogant. We practically invented the train. I mean, I know it came from the U.K., but with the West and... Oh, uh, Wizard Ogre. With the West and dealing with all of the shit along the West. Um... We had to build rail everywhere. Cars didn't exist yet. Everything was rail or covered in wagon. And part of it was real estate investment schemes and bullshit, but we really just tore this country apart with rail. Re shoved all my ancestors on reservations, massacred the, the bison population for rail. And then we invent the car and we stop using fucking any of it. We let it all fall into disrepair. We decide not to electrify outside of a couple big cities. Let the streetcar lines get torn up by Ford Motor Company. Which was not as much of a conspiracy theory as it was. Just rail, passenger rail, it turns out, is not profitable. Neither are passenger roads. There's a reason the government runs roads. And there's a reason the government needs to run rail. But if you say, let's uh, run the roads for free, people are like, yeah. If you say, let's run the rail for free, people are like, but how are we going to afford it? How the fuck do we afford the highways? Like, yeah, the Pennsylvania Turnpike costs money to use, but like... The way the Pennsylvania Turnpike collects its money, they have like a 30% non-payment rate or something absurd like that. Like, It's really easy to use the Pennsylvania Turnpike and not pay and not suffer any consequences for not paying. And that's how toll roads are. And there's so few of them in the US because People get pissy about the toll roads. And the, really, the toll roads are the ones that are big, like, freight traffic out east. Oh yeah! That's... That's how a lot of these things work. Almost like the point of business is make line go up and they don't actually care about producing anything of value. I have not worked at a company past a startup that has cared about making something of value. Startups care about making something of value so that they can get bought. And once they bought, the people who bought them don't care about what they're making. They only care, are they making money? Do they make the line go up? I mean, there's a reason I'm a communist, and it isn't because I read Marx or something, it's because I worked, and I like making things. Like, I don't like programming, but 
I'm able to cope with being a programmer for so long because, like, you make stuff. Like, well, so does your company care about it or do the people working at your company care about it? Because, like, the company I'm working for, everyone I deal with wants to make a good product. But the people in charge who own the company don't actually care if the product's any good. They just care if they're making money. And they, like, cut costs at every corner and make it almost impossible to make a good product. It's very depressing. Very demoralizing to work there. Because I'll be like, we have a problem in our database that we need to fix. And it's a relatively simple fix. It'll take us about three days. And it will take down one module while we're making the fix. Essentially, we had this whole module that we had to rush to get done because a client was demanding it. And at that time, that client was like half our income. And so we just kind of hijacked it together. And it's garbage. And it's causing problems. We have, in the terms of the, late, of the industry... Oh, I am, I am off-center. Let me fix myself. In terms of the industry, we have technical debt. And everyone who's worked in programming knows this term. They know this feeling. But like... My... The people in charge of the company aren't willing to take that module offline for... A, a week. And they also aren't willing to allocate resources away from onboarding new clients for a week. But, like, if we just had, like, four people go in, maybe five people go in, <coughs> rebuild how our database is structured for this module, update our API for this module, update our stored procedures, we would greatly enhance our technical capability. We'd be able to onboard people easier, we'd have fewer bugs, we'd have less angry clients, but we wouldn't be able to make line go up for two weeks. Well, I already did this place, okay. Well, that's good for your company. But yeah, I'm just... I've worked at jobs I hated where I'm just like, at least the, uh, at least the people working here want to make a good product. I've also worked at jobs that were outright scams. Like, there's a company I worked for that was 1,000% a investment scam. They were not interested in producing a product. They just wanted to get investment money and then bolt. Only, it turns out, we thought that the product that they thought was actually impossible to make sounded cool to make. So, we made it. And there was this moment where you saw this look of terror in the CEO's eyes and he realized that they actually have to deliver their product now because we made it work. And it was very funny. Family business. <laughs> but yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Moral of all the stories is... More of the story is, capitalism is, oh yeah, the, the guy was, and that's how a lot of companies are, like there are a lot of companies that are kind of investment scams. Like the idea is to get the investment money, funnel it into the CEO, 
uh, make a good effort to produce the product, and then when the company fails, oh no, the CEO is protected. The people who started the company are protected. They've already gotten the funds from the investors, and from like a legal perspective, it's just a failed investment. What on earth are they going to do? Huzzah! More vitality, more hit points. We're really cutting it close again on Barbie's HP. CEOs don't take any responsibility. Yeah, I don't get where liberals get this idea of responsibility among the CEOs. It's almost as though they've never actually like worked a job, or if they have, they haven't paid attention to how their companies work. Ooh, bit dizzy. It's okay, we're nearly out of caching. Nearly there. I don't know how many hours we've spent in caching. Way too long. Probably five or six hours, maybe, trying to get through this place. Monsters from the gold armor. Okay, let's hit you, mines. So hopefully we can burn them down well enough. Ouch. Please don't kill Barbie. Uh, so much pain. Gearing up everyone here because we're getting close to that boss. And then I think we're gonna drop our ethers on Barbie and Lori. So we have good access to heals in that boss and magics. Although, actually, I looked up and the boss that we're coming up on has a lot of absorb. So I don't know how useful it'll be. Let's go ahead and just prepare. And to go. Oh, oh it's an adamant. Adamanti again. You're our buddy and pal. Well, we cursed it. That's good. I do like the curse.
and there we go. Dum, dum, ba, da, da, da. Shield up, vitality up, HP up. Diamond shield. Getting even better. Oh, time to burn everyone. stairs. We'll drop a save state in front of the boss in case I do something stupid. And then we'll push through, we'll finish, we'll gather the flame, we'll save. And we will be happy that we finally burned our way through Keshun. Okay, here we are, hours of grinding and suffering and learning, and we find our way at this, the flame. It's Red Soul, Guardian of the Agile Torch. <coughs> well, this isn't too bad. Little bit danger of Lori dying here, but this has got absorb on everything, so it's not really any sense in trying to have Lori attack with magic. Saren Rose and everyone. Bunny raid. Wow. <laughs> We're getting raided by bunnies. Well, welcome to <laughs> welcome to grinding our way through Final Fantasy II blind. And. Really wishing I had drain right now, actually. I'm wishing actually the Cassie would put a curse on this red soul already. Um we're finally gonna get through Cashin after several streams of 
repeatedly dying because we hit a difficulty spike and learned we made some poor choices early on. Gordon is still alive. This time around, Gordon has died a great deal, but we've always managed to bring him back. Uh, I just wish this one were vulnerable to some sort of magic, because this is not a very fun fight. It's very tedious. Cassie, curse him, for Christ's sake. I... Oh, it stopped casting magic. Did it run out of MP? That's hilarious. Uh... Go ahead, take your time. <sighs> I'm going to be focused on the very mentally strenuous task of pressing X a great deal on my keyboard. And trying not to let anyone's health fall too low. But I mean, if they paid for the whole health bar, they may as well use it, right? Although I think we won't... We'll do one more round and then we'll run a heal. Finally, it's cursed. Finally, the curse. Ah, oh, so much effort. And... Not doing much because Barbie's kind of a backbone damage right now. And our healer. But at least we're getting some damage from Lori now because of the curse. That's good. continue just punching. This is such an exciting fight. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Yay! We killed it. That was so much strain and stress to get here and it was nothing. Oh my god. We have the torch. I don't want to walk down. Barbie. You know what to do. Cure three now. Torch everyone, thank you kindly. I'm not interested anymore. Oh, finally be cashing.
That was disappointing. Ah, it's fine. Oh, I am not... I am not going to be disappointed when we have auto reassignment, though. Antidote. We have so much to sell. The Sunflame is taken. Excellent. After all this work. Oh no! Sid! Oh no! That's actually very worrying. Because, you know, it's Sid. And all the gay pirates of Hoft are already dead. We've already seen Sid left with all of his friends gone. And now, suicidally attacking the warship? We don't even have the Sunflame yet. What is that idiot doing? Sid, what are you doing? No, don't. Oh no. <laughs> I'm worried now. Okay. What we need to do... We need to get on those chocobos. And we need to ride, and we need to ride back to the home base. We need to make sure everyone's okay. Hey, chocobo. Let's go. We'll go around this way. We'll die if we get off the chocobo over here, but we know better than to do that. Can't actually go over there. The warship has landed. I knew this place had some sort of significance, so apparently Sid forced the warship to land. I don't want to go there yet, though. I want to. I want to hit up um, our home base, do some sales, make sure that we have everything in order. enough. Mmm, radishes. That sounds like it's kind of rad-ish. We have the Eagle Torch. What's going on? Next time the worship attacks, it'll be the end. Cashin Sunflame. Yes, we have it. What happened to the princess? The Empire's supplies come from north of Finn. The warship must be there. Yes, we saw it on our way south. Yes. Sa save the princess. Stopped the shore and the princess got on the airship before I knew it, the Empire had her. Princess took Sid's airship to meet us at Cashin. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Landed north of Finn. At least Sid managed to force it down. We. This is bad. Hilda's been captured. Oh dear. Well, 
guess we should have gotten off the chocobo with the airship because uh guess what we need to go no we, we have we have stuff we need to sell and we have to verify our equipment to make sure we're all up to date and i need to finish streaming a rest so let's prepare and then we'll go We have Suna now, so that means we don't need to worry too much about things. Let's begin by coming over here. Mithril armor is 500, is 1,000. Who needs Mithril armor? Is gold better than Mithril is the question. And that's what Google is for. <laughs> FF2 armor. <laughs> Body armor. Gold is better than mithril. So we do not need to get mithril for Cassie. We have it for Barbie. So we need Mithril for Gordon. We have Mithril Helms for everyone. We have a Gold Shield. We need another Mithril Battle Axe. Okay. So let's buy one set of Mithril Armor to equip on Gordon. We can sell what we have there. And do we have a Mithril Helm on you? We do not. We need a Mithril Helm, a Mithril Arm. Mithril Arm. Mithril arm. So two mithril arms and a mithril helm. Three mithril arms and a mithril helm. Have a great night. We're not going to miss much more because we're just equipping and preparing, and then I will be going because I am, as usual, very dizzy for no good reason. But thank you for coming by. Selling our old bronze equipment. And... Let's see if we can get another Mithril Axe. We cannot get another Mithril Axe here. We can get a Mithril Spear. We should then. So let's sell the weapons we don't need anymore. Mithril Spear, because Gordon is better with spears, which means we have a Mithril Sword to sell. And now we have an item shop to check out. Purge our item list of what we don't really need and make sure we have what we do need. So like, we have potions. We are beyond the point where potions are useful. Antidotes, we have Asuna, so I don't think we need antidotes.
Same with the eye drops. A couple X potions. We need to sell a bit for an ether. I don't think I need to use them in combat, so let's just disconnect everything here. And there we go. We are ready. <sighs> Finally beat Cashin. Thank you everyone for coming by. Uh, I am ready to go. Take a nap. Uh, hopefully Tuesday evening around 4 o'clock central time, if health permits, we'll be continuing and going to take on that dread fortress. But for now, let's find if there's someone to raid. Let's see. There's not really anyone in my radius streaming. What do we have as far as recommendations? You have fun. And thank you for coming by. Let's see about... Ooh, there's someone playing Morrowind. A random Moreland. Let's let's check this person out. Hopefully this person isn't some horrible human being. And as we go, remember. Be gay. Do crimes. <laughs> 